Area three. Yes, uh, Steve Patisse, shareholder from Los Angeles. Uh, good morning, Warren and Charlie. I'd like to address the domestic Coke business. It seems to me that Coke has been pulling back from what former great CEO Robert Glazetta often said, and I paraphrase, we can't control what soft drinks people buy at retail, but in public venues, including food service, we can control that. Uh, we've all heard about the marquee losses that Coca-Cola uh, has had, such as the NFL, United Airlines, and emerging restaurant brands like Baja Fresh, Mexican Grill. But they're also losing contracts with major or minor league baseball, college, and high school venues. Furthermore, it's my understanding that our competitor, PepsiCo, has been the fastest growing domestic beverage company for three consecutive years. My question is, has Coke's vision changed? And is my perception that the domestic fountain division has lost their way correct? Yeah, no, I would not say that's correct, but I understand the reason for the question because there, there is the question always of the, of the marquee type accounts. I mean, the truth is either of the two major colas that are going to be sold uh, and associated with, say, the Olympics or Disney World or whatever it is, is going to lose a lot of money if only directly thought of in terms of those contracts. But there is that association over years. I mean, Coke wants to be where people are happy, and they want that in people's minds, and that tends to be, you know, it's sporting events, it's, 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 it's the Disneyland, Disney Worlds of the, of the world. But in the end... Can you have a determination to be at every one of them at any price? And the answer, obviously, is no. Uh, it was sort of interesting. Um, about five years ago, uh, or thereabouts, uh, Coke uh, took Venezuela essentially away from Pepsi. Pepsi. Venezuela was one of the few countries in the world in which, in which Pepsi was the leader. And that was because the Cisneros family had developed the business down there very early. So Pepsi had 70 or 80 percent of the business. And in sort of a midnight raid, uh, Coke um, bought the Cisneros operation, converted it all to Pep uh, Coke overnight, flew 747s in because they didn't want to have this. They wanted it to be a surprise. And they just reversed the whole situation in Venezuela. And uh, it actually... It, whether that is going to turn out to be smart or not is another question because uh, uh, they paid a lot of money to do it. But in any event, Pepsi was very upset. And so the University of Nebraska pouring rights came up uh, very shortly thereafter. And, these, and the universities, as you know, bid out these things to get sort of an exclusive to a given university. And Pepsi came in and bid about twice as much for the Nebraska pouring, University of Nebraska pouring rights as was the sort of the standard in terms of per student at, at universities throughout the country, at Penn State or something. And, and I like to think that they were trying to stick it in the eye of Coke by doing that in Nebraska. And I feel that the University of Nebraska really should give me credit for about $5 million a year of contribution to the university because I don't think Pepsi would have done it if it hadn't been in Nebraska. Now, the question is, people at Coke called me and they said, you know, do you want us to go up against this? And I said, you know, no. It's, I mean, it, it, uh, it's nice to have everybody at the University of Nebraska drinking Coke, but if we've got everybody at Penn State drinking Coke, I mean, they're probably worth as much as potential Coke customers. So there is this bit where one organization or the other, particularly if they've lost one in the immediate past, may overbid a little for the next one. Uh, and, you know, for United Airlines, the question is, is how far do you let United or whomever it is drive you in terms of making that specific deal? I would say that in something like the Olympics, you know, I think Eastman Kodak made a huge mistake when they let Fuji take away the Los Angeles Olympics 20 years ago or so because it allowed Fuji to get put on a, a mental parody uh, to a degree with a Kodak, whereas Kodak had always owned that, and now Fuji 
She was there with Coca-Cola and IBM and a few premier companies, and it was it was a mistake. So in the end, you end up overpaying in any kind of an objective quantitative sense for most of these marquee properties, but you can't, it'd be foolish to think that you had to have them all. Coca-Cola, actually Pepsi-Cola, uh, colas have generally declined somewhat as a percentage of per capita uh, consumption in the United States. Uh, and Pepsi-Cola has uh, lost considerably more than Coke. What, is, what has kept Pepsi, Pepsi doing well, uh, uh, basically, is Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew has been a, a very successful product for Pepsi, and that, that has gained share in carbonated soft drinks. Carbonated soft drinks, the average person in this room drinks 64 ounces of liquid a year. Carbonated soft drinks are just under 30% of that. And uh, beer and milk are each about 11 or 12%. Uh, they're both down from 10 years ago. Carbonated soft drinks are up substantially. Bottled water is up somewhat. But the only two categories that are really up are, are, are carbonated soft drinks from 10 years ago and, 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 uh, uh, and bottled water. Coffee's down significantly. You think Starbucks has done a lot, but coffee just keeps going down and down and down. Uh, if you look at Coke, of the almost 30% of, of liquids consumed in the United States, they have about 43% of the 30 in, in, in their arena. So you're talking 13% of all liquids, uh, you know, tap water, everything else that the American water, the American people drink is a Coca-Cola product. And it's off a couple tenths of 1% from the high, but it's, it's higher than five years ago, it's higher than 10 years ago. And actually in the first quarter, it did quite well too. So I don't, I don't, I think there's been no, I'm, I'm sure there's been no loss of marketing vigor. Doug Daft is a marketer at heart. He's a, he, you know, he's, he comes from the same, he's put together the same way as, uh, along the same lines as Don Keel. There'll never be another Don Keel, but, but, but Doug is the same type of guy. He's in, he's in tune with the product. And, uh, I would, if I had to bet, I would bet the market share of, of Coke in terms of, uh, of, both carbonated soft drinks uh, and in turn, actually in terms of water, I mean the Dasani, the gains in Dasani last year were like 95% in the first quarter, they were about 60%, those were huge gains. And Pepsi got an earlier start with Aquafina, but Coke has almost closed that gap. Uh, Coke is a very, very powerful marketing organization, sold 18, I think 0.7 billion cases. There's nothing like it in the world, and I, I, I do not think they've lost their focus or drive in any way whatsoever. Charlie? I, I've got nothing to add. Might try vanilla Coke to it. It'll be out next month. <laughs>